the tissue is invaluable because then the scientist will study that tissue and look at the tissue to find the genes that cause cancer in that tissue. And then that can lead to the development of better methods for diagnosing those patients earlier. We think if we can diagnose cancer earlier, we can cure a whole lot more people. But also, in patients whose cancer has spread, this can lead to the development of targeted therapies, of therapies that target that cancer gene. It's like a, a personalized form of medicine or cancer therapy. So I can't think of a more important project for the gracious patients who donate tissue to this uh, effort. We hope it will help them, but we hope uh, that it will also possibly help their families, but in many ways, more importantly, every patient uh, that develops that cancer. You know, one of the great things about the Cancer Genome Atlas is, has been that it's revealed how hard it is to do good patient-based, um, uh, translational, tissue-based research. So we've really just opened up the hood on working with patient samples. And it's hard, it's ex extremely hard. Uh, for one thing, you know, we didn't know five years ago what we would need to, to do this type of work. Uh, we didn't know that we needed blood. We, we didn't know how much tissue we needed. We didn't know what form it would need to be in. We didn't know about the, a lot of the ethics issues. So the Cancer Genome Atlas has just shown us what we need to do to do good tissue banking. The quality and the quantity of the tissue are very critical because all technologies in this field and the genomics field are evolving all the time. And so this project is also changing to try to meet the demands of those new technologies. If you take a tumor out of the body, the RNA will start degrading right away. The DNA is a little bit more stable, and so we can have a little bit of time, but that's why the tumors really need to be snap frozen uh, immediately. So they're frozen immediately so that the RNA stays intact. There are several layers of quality control that go on in the biospecimen core resources. The first one is actually by a trained pathologist. We look at a variety of different tumor types, and they're trained particularly in those specific tumor types. For example, we look at breast, or we look at colon, or we look at endometrial cancer. We work with pathologists to actually review those specimens and make sure that they're of the highest quality. That's our first step when they come in the door. After that, then, if they pass through that pathology review, then we will turn them into molecular analytes, or what you've heard of DNA or RNA, and then we do quality control of those analytes to make sure that we think they're going to work for the sequencing or for the other genomic analysis that goes on downstream of ours.